there's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work, it's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say. Balls to the wall. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. Chicken police, hands up. Marty, that's enough. Chicken police, hands up. Marty, that's enough. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. You wrote that down? It burned into my mind. Damn, it's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? Not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Should we take it? Hell no. I'll buy you one if you want. This is police business. Do you mean the real cops? Do you think? I'm almost certain. My crest is tingling. Damn it. Well, thank God I have a weapon on me, or two. When do you not have one? Fair point. Stop staring at it. You're freaking me out. Okay, okay. I just like shoes. Furry hell, Marty. I don't want to know. Stop staring at it. Chicken police. Marty, before we enter, did you bring Big Bertha? Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. Aw, oh, scared? Take it easy. I swore I'm not gonna shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. Why, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. I get it. Just shut the fuck up already. It's the nothing. Uh, what was that? Eh, forget it. Just an old quote from a movie. It means it's fucking dark in here. <sighs> Flashlight. I didn't bring one. Yeah, me neither. What a pair of fucking professionals. Yep. But you do have a shotgun with you. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. Is that from an old movie? No, it's an original. Figures.
She was lying on the floor as if she was sleeping. She looked peaceful, almost. The large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city, but in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Wild gods! Fuck even! Yeah, it's her. Deborah. The girl who came to my office. I figured, but what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what you wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object. Something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was it sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or she was already here and something happened to her too. Kidnapped or worse. Those are possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house. Search everything. The room's not trash. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I have no idea, but it's something important. Things like that have a way of getting noticed when you come across them. Amen to that. Does this fireplace seem as suspicious to you as it seems to me, Marty? Hmm, it looks like it's never been used. And the place has radiators in every room, meaning there's central heating. Then why the fireplace? For decoration? Does this fireplace seem as suspicious to you as it... Here too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah and wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. I really shouldn't be here, you know. It's New Year's Eve. I should be out partying, not dealing with this shit. Well, it's a little late for that. I told you it was going to be a rough ride. What you told me was it's going to take a few hours and it's practically nothing. <laughs> and you believe me. Yeah, I was an idiot. There you go. Poor girl. How old was she? 20? 25? Yeah, something like that. What are we going to do about her? Nothing. We can call the police. Anonymously, of course. Poor thing. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. There's nothing else useful in there. This must be Natasha's family. Yeah, wealthy. Do you think she's from the Stavonian Tsar's family? 
Oh, nobody could have survived that massacre. But I'm sure this family was also close to the fire. What is she doing here anyway? What, an alias? Keeping secrets, and now this case? Do you think it's all connected somehow? Let's not draw hasty conclusions, Marty. Look at those clothes. Could it be a military family? Maybe. Or Stavonian fashion. Your intuition always astounds me, Marty. What would I do without you? And there you go. We can't take it with us, but remember what you've seen. Yes, sir, Boss Bird, sir. This... what is this exactly? A human. Mythical creature. Quite the cult in Iveria. The whole country's full of these statues. Does it mean anything? They say humans are the keepers of secrets and the messengers of chaos and destruction. You don't think... Let's take a closer look. Molly loved things like this. How about this one here goes missing and, uh... Don't even finish that sentence, Marty. Molly loved things like... It's an exceptionally beautiful piece. What does it depict, I wonder? I have no idea, Sonny. It's so art, I'm scared to have an opinion. Nice. Yeah, it really is. Nice. Yeah. Just like in the adventure books. Rich animals are all insane. You have a point. Well, you can't be serious. <laughs> Is this some kind of... Yeah, it's a riddle, Marty. But it doesn't make any sense. Why use something as simple as this when a four-digit number is almost impossible? An idle whim, or the riddle has a meaning. Maybe. Four animals into four places. What does it represent? Think, Marty. Where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? Hello there. What could this be? Maybe a piece of a painting. And there's some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the painter? Yeah, I can't make it out. It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. It's a piece of... A SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities. 
but we must find out where it's from. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Well, maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. A uh, bourbon in my office? Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer. We should call the department. Anonymously, of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. Is it? Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. I was just testing you. Yeah, right. found a corpse. A woman. She's dead. Cold. The address is Rochester Street 37, Flowerville. Sir, please, would you repeat that? Rochester Street 37. Write it down and hurry up for the sake of the wild ones. Hurry! Hurry! Like a pro. Yep, like I've done it before. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. How can you forget a case like that? How many times have you seen a three-headed monkey in your life? I have a memory of a chicken, you know. That's for sure. Now let's get the hell out of here. Stop staring at... You wrote that down? It... So what are we doing here again, Sonny? I don't know. Maybe we could question Natasha. Do you think she's here? Who knows, Marty? We'll see. There's Filmar. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, maybe he's not drunk as a skunk. Stop projecting onto others, old chicken. Ah, shut the clock up, Marty. No, oh, I'm sorry I hurt your precious feelings, boss bird.
Hey, boys, tell me, is Natasha still inside? I can't give you any information about that, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Ah, the regulations. I know. We've gotten used to it. I am glad to hear that. And your boss, Wessler? Can we find him in the VIP lounge? I'm afraid I can't tell you that either. But we can take a look for ourselves, right? No problem, gentlemen. Thanks, Wooly. Your friend's not the talkative type, is he? He understands what we're saying, right? Don't anger me, chicken, or I'll tear out your throat before you could say hemp seed. Ha, huh. just try, Fleabag. Hey, folks, relax. The night's still young. We'll have plenty of time to tear each other's throats out, but right now we're busy. Ha, huh. you're right. Bye, guys. Goodbye, gentlemen. Excuse me, are you the parking valet? Heh, <laughs> you lost. Ah, I'll have to practice that some more. Excuse me. If this car's still here, and Wessler's already gone, that means it's not his car. It's like your first day as a detective. You didn't consider that he could have multiple cars? Huh. You could be right. Sometimes I think you breathe in too much gun smoke, Marty. Mm, but I love the smell so much. Maybe it's not Wessler's, but Natasha's car. That would explain why she wasn't at the weekend house. She hadn't left here. Yeah, that could be. It's worth a look inside. Moonlight Boulevard. Ah, that movie. It's a real classic, I'm telling you. If you say so, Mr. Film Critic. Laugh all you want, but believe it or not, very few have seen more movies in the city than me. So, you can believe me. I would never try to doubt your word. If we were really in a movie, at least there'd be a chance of a happy ending. Why do I feel like I'm never going to forget this sign? Because you have a photographic memory? You moron. The Czar Club. I'm not going to forget this buzzing red neon light anytime soon. Tonight? Maybe we'll be on the front page once again. Oh, God forbid. Filmar looks a bit soaked, doesn't he? Well, it is raining. I didn't mean the rain, Marty. Yeah, I know. Still, let's ask him what he saw. Maybe he can tell us something useful. If the old man still sees anything, eagle eye or not. Hey, old bird. What are you waiting for out here in the rain? Is that you, boys? I'm a little, uh, tired. I can see that, pal. Oh, it's all right. I just can't find my car. I don't see very well in the rain. It's my eyesight's pretty bad. I should wear glasses. <laughs> Imagine that. A hawk wearing glasses. Yeah, it's funny. There ain't nothing funny about it, Snowflake. Whoa, all right. Sorry. Have you seen uh, Natasha or Ibn since we left? Ibn? Uh, he scarped off a long time ago. Natasha? I haven't seen her. Thanks anyway, pal. Uh, good luck with finding your car. You uh, want some help? Could be that I didn't come here by car. What do you think, Sonny? Your old friend? Well, I wouldn't know that, Phil, but uh, you take care, all right? Ah, uh, you're telling me? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Sonny, pal, listen. Tell me, Phil. I like you. Really, I do. So listen here. Whatever happens, yeah? Whatever happens, never fall in love with that woman. You mean Natasha? 
Who else would I mean, bird brain? Okay, okay, Phil. I promise. <sighs> like hell. Maybe I came by bike. Bike, huh? I have a hard time imagining that, pal. Yeah, right. Me too. Maybe you flew, huh? Don't you provoke me, Marty. You hear? Hey, I was just kidding. Don't peck off my tail feathers, brother. Maybe... Still, let's ask him what he saw. If the old man... Don't get me wrong, boss, but I saw how that song affected you. What song? Stop playing innocent, Sonny. Natasha's song, it made you freeze. I've never seen you like that before. Yeah, you're imagining things, Marty. I was just uh, paying attention because I like the song. It has a really good uh, orchestration. Orchestration, huh? <laughs> Shut the clock up, Marty. Okay, okay. Keep your feathers on. Honestly, I thought you forgot how to breathe for about two minutes. Marty, if you don't stop, I'm gonna peel your feathers off and cook you as a delicacy. All right, all right. It's just too good. Honestly, Should we say hi to the old beaver? Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. Mullen's car. Ancient, but kind of beautiful, like the old beaver himself. Seems like the kiosk is still a good business. The taxi company for the upper class only, politicians and gangsters. I had a chance to travel in one of these once. I was being taken to my own execution, but that's another story. Murdoch and Falcon is a famous law firm in Clawville, run by a blind bat and a bird-brained falcon. They had some big-time cases that helped make their name. I hope I'll have the opportunity to work with them in the future. Some things are indestructible, right? Yeah. Mullen's kiosk's been here since I was a little chick. My old man used to drive here from the other side of town for his daily papers. Yeah, many still do. He certainly is something. Mullen's a wizard from a forgotten age. Yeah, kind of. This newspaper booth has been standing here for more than a hundred years. It was always run by the Mullen family, like some strange monument to a forgotten age. The Clawville Chronicle, the most read and probably the most biased newspaper in the city. It's supposed to be a royalist rag, but the separatist overtones are getting stronger and stronger every day. The Chronicle either put the chicken police on a pedestal or it was gnawing on our drumsticks, mostly thanks to our dear friend, Timothy Saltwater, 
We made it much easier to sell the paper until the public got bored. The Chronicle either... Chandler's used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Magnificent animals had breakfast here, and in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop, just a shadow of its former self, like so many things in this city, like me. I wonder if they've got the entire Chicken Police series. It, not that I give a cluck, of course, but... We're getting older and older, and Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's the justice in that? He's just eternal. Like an ancient god or something. Or the personification of the city. What a lovely thought. But if the city took shape, it would most likely be some kind of vermin. Yeah, true. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct, coming from you, pal. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know, Marty. You're too good for this world. Ah, oh, thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. Mullen never closes his kiosk, not even on New Year's Eve. Hey, Hercule. What's up, old friend? Hello, me lads. It's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? <laughs> We're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. <laughs> what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me sons, so you are. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. What's up, old man? Is everything all right? Uh, me bones are creaking, the eyesight's getting more and more blurry, and sometimes I hear sounds that aren't even there. I think I'm getting old, or maybe I've gone crazy already, but the old ticker's still ticking, so here I am. Ah, it's good to still have an old familiar spot in the city. Ah, nothing lasts forever, boys. So, what is this dirt you've ended up in again, eh? Ah, uh, just a simple case, strumming personal strings. That's why I couldn't refuse it. You know the tune. Well, well, ah, yeah, yeah. Same old song, eh? Yeah, it's a classic. So, what is it you want to know? I'm at your service, me lads. Thanks, old pal. Let's see. Eben's a ruthless gangster, that's for sure, but he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way, and that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel Mick, Eben's number one pug, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my call, dead carcass. Oh, well, looks like it worked. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, he usually listens to reason. 
Yeah, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. Hey, Martin Millard, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Laura's perfectly fine, thank you. It's crazy you could grab an amazing woman like her, son. Are you blackmailing her with something? Ah, I missed your famous beaver humor. I'm just messing with you, son. Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. This is priceless. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again soon. Yeah, sure will. Nice girl. She used to come here for a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them, makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed there is, somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. How's Desiree? What about her? She's still beautiful, and she's still my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't left me already. Because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And, uh, the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, Sonny. You know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a gal such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can, and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything, uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville. But from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery. And that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, silly boy. And one more thing. What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old-timer. I know, Martin. I know. Thanks, old pal.
Phyllis and Roy's are nowhere to be seen. Praise the great wild ones. Well, let's hope this is a good omen. Maybe, finally, the pincushions have started to do something with themselves. And maybe it's not a coincidence, since we've just found a dead body, Marty. Yeah, what can I say? The night's starting to get off, huh? Just like the good old days. Well, let's just hope there won't be any more surprises tonight. You don't believe that, do you, boss? How many of these did we wreck in ten years, Sonny? Nine. And I have no idea. I stopped counting after year two. How much does it cost the city to keep us on the force? Well, stop thinking about it. It'll make your head hurt. Yeah, right. They should really switch to a new model. We've been driving around in these since they invented the wheel. Even the most incompetent fur smuggler can outride us on a bicycle. Well, at least we can blame the car. Good point. You know, we've been shot at so many times, and we shoot others so many times, that you forget that one stray bullet, and it's all over. The last bullet in me was from you, and it wasn't stray. I mean, don't distress yourself over it. I'm not mad at you anymore. <laughs> Thanks. Let's be thankful for all the bullets that ended up in here, Marty. What do you mean? Because a bullet in a wall isn't in a body. Sometimes I think the badge means nothing anymore. Well, only you can decide that, boss. I mean, the motto, the lion, the crown. They've lost their significance in the eyes of the people. Not while we're around, Sonny. Maybe Marty's right. We've got to do everything for the city that we can. Sometimes I think Blood Boil lives in some kind of pseudo-reality. Uh, what? An imaginary, distorted reality where he's controlling the city and, right now, he's building some kind of police state utopia for the future. What exactly have you been reading? Why? Can I have my own thoughts? I don't know. Can you? Aw, oh, so heartwarming, isn't it? No, it's not. Tonight, the heart of the station is beating incessantly. That was beautiful, boss. Tonight, that was beautiful. Hey, Mon, is the boss uh, angry today? Angry? That's an understatement. I see the New Year's madness has started. Everyone busy? As normal, boys. The city's gone crazy, and we already have our first dead body. They found a girl in Flowerville. It's a nasty case. What do we know about it? Sonny, you know I can't tell you. Oh, come on, Mon. I only have 120 days left. And we could pretend these are my last beautiful days. On my feathers, Sonny, stop that. It's so not your style. Ah, uh, he's been like this all day. Shut up, Marty. Come on, Mon. All right. Though I don't know much. The girl was found inside a house. I won't tell you the address. I have a hunch you already know. Why do you think that? Never mind. Anyway, she was naked, but there wasn't any sign of a struggle. There was a message written on the wall and on her back, too. That's all? That's all. Thanks, Mon. You're not gonna ask what the message was? Uh, oh yeah, w what was it? You already know, don't you? Dot. <laughs> I'm an open book to you, Mon. One I've read too many times. Can I be honest? I'm worried about you boys. You haven't gotten mixed up in some shady affair, have you? We have. Sorry, Mon. I could never lie to you. Well, then I strongly advise you to get yourself out of it because I'm not in the mood for your funeral, all right? Furry gods, don't be so extreme, Mon. It's just some routine sniffing around on New Year's Eve. 
You don't do routine, boys. When you're sniffing around, fire and chaos follow. Hey, you're not Meredith H. Marble, the author of the Chicken Police books, by any chance? That would have been a great blurb. I'm not joking, boys. Okay, Mon. We'll be careful. I hope so. Don't do anything crazy, all right? Okay, Mon. Uh, no promises, though. I see the boss is ready to explode today. What did you expect? The madness kicked in and he's got to be at the PD. Deputy Malloy's blind drunk. Uh, what's the name of the old man's wife again? Uh, poor lady. Marsha. She was waiting here for a while too, hoping it'll only take a few minutes. But as soon as they saw the state Malloy was in, she got into a taxi and went home. So that's why the old hound's so angry. Please, boys. Don't make him more so, all right? Unfortunately, I can't promise that, doll. As usual. Look what we found, Mon. Does this mean anything to you? It's beautiful. Embossed, gilded. These are rare. But I've never seen anything like this one before. Where's it from? I'm afraid that's a secret. At least for now. You haven't taken vital evidence from a crime scene, I hope. Oh, what are you thinking? On my feathers. You're gonna be in trouble, boys. Only if we don't wrap it up, Mon. Listen, Mon, uh, that girl they found in Flowerville. You've seen her, right? Yes, we were first on the scene. Boys, you know I should report you immediately, don't you? We know, Mon. We're only asking for a little more time. We're hot on the trail. If you learn anything, would you, uh, please tell us? Are you crazy? Hey, keep it down. Blood boils right behind us. Please, Mon. It's a matter of life and death. God damn. Okay, but only because I can see how much it means to you. Thanks, doll. We'll be forever grateful. Good old Filmar hasn't been sniffing around here recently. Yeah, he was here a week and a half ago. He used the archives and took out some public records. That's all? That's all. Oh, and uh, he asked me out for a coffee. I hope you said no. Why are you so interested, Marty? No, I'm not. I just... I'm just... I told him no. Just like I told you no on all 25 occasions. <sighs> Glad to hear that. Don't do anything crazy, all right? Okay, Mon. And... Have you been flooded by patriotism too, Sonny? Of course, Marty. I feel this way all the time. I think you're mocking me. I think you should become a detective. All it takes is one look and my comb starts to tingle, which never means anything good. Don't drink that shit, Marty. It's bad for your health. We have no business there. Officer Barkman, one of Blood Boil's little protégés. Shouting in three, two, one. And action. Mark, what the hell do you think you're doing? We're just patrolling, sir. At the station? No, we're here for something else, sir. <sighs> you missed me, huh? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, I mean... Why are you grinning, Santino? I can't grin, sir. I have a beak. Oh, be cute. I can see it in your eyes. Should I close them, sir? Don't you peck at me, chicken, you hear? We're not even here anymore, Chief. We just quickly stopped by for something. Get out of my sight. Yes, sir. Damn it, Sonny. Why do we have to do this? You'll survive, Marty. If he hasn't chomped your head off before, he's not going to do it tonight. I'm not so sure about that. Damn it, Sonny. What? You're on duty. Am I right, Martin? Yes, sir. 
And why the hell are you standing here? Don't you have something to do? I do, sir. Then fuck off. And you, Sonny, don't even think about saying anything. I can already see you're dying to say something funny. I wouldn't think about it, sir. You're on duty. Am I right, Martin? Yes, sir. Then why the hell are you standing here? Don't you have something to do? I do, sir. Then fuck off. And you, Sonny, don't even think about I wouldn't think about Was it a good idea to... Shouldn't you be somewhere else, Marty? I mean, anywhere else. You know, I spend every New Year's Eve in here, Sonny. Ever since that New Year's Eve. It's better if I try to distract my thoughts, and work's the best way to do it. You mean fire rounds all night long? You drink, I fire. No offense. No offense taken. And you, boss? Do you still think about the bloody New Year's? Almost every day, Marty. Almost every goddamn rust-eaten day. You know, pal, you're damn lucky with Laura. A woman like her. With a feathery loser like me? I didn't mean it that way. You're right, though. And don't believe for a second that I'm ungrateful. I give praise every day that I have her. And that she hasn't already eaten you for breakfast. Yeah, that too. Not that I want to dig around in your private life, but weren't you ever afraid of her? Of Laura? Why, because she's a predator? Yes, and because you're a chicken. And because you work for the predatory division. No, boss, never. Not for a second. There isn't a woman in the world more gentle than her. I believe you, pal. Good for you. Yeah, it is. Well, who's gonna be the first one to get emotional? Come on, give me a hug. Ah, oh, shut up, Marty. Well? Well, we're already in it now. From our spurs to our combs. All right, take it and let's go. It couldn't hurt. <gasps> really? I can bring Layla? Of course not. I was joking. Do you think we'd be driving around town with a Tommy gun on New Year's Eve? Exactly that, yeah. Well, I hate to disappoint you, pal. You're one cruel chicken, Sonny. Maybe next time, my love. Stop whispering to your guns, Marty. It gives me the creeps. Don't listen to him. He'll never understand us. I believe this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. <laughs> Remember how Blood Boyle freaked out when he first saw this? Yeah, the old man's blood pressure must have gone as high as when he first met a bitch in heat. More and more cops came down to the range to practice. Who knows why? Hello, sweetheart.
We had no choice but to continue the investigation where it started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Fillmore gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold, and so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds, hiding all the stars. I prayed that they didn't bring an early snowfall. The night was already painful enough. So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course. Figure out what's next. And what is next, Boss Bird? Let's take a look at what we've learned so far. So, how did this whole case start? speak about. Natasha is terrified, and she's in real danger, but she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. this list. I know only one person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. So, the card is, uh, uh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting, too. But the list Filmar gave us... Exactly. Full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar! Yes, Marty. It's Lewis. Exactly. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? Well, since he owns this building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart. 555932. I wrote it down in my notebook as well. Oh, you are a professional, Boss Bird. Of all that's fur. If there are books in the world worth feeling sorry for, these are them. Maybe when I can't afford heating anymore, I'll make a good fire out of them. Of all that's furry. I should be doing something, but I just stare out the window like a feather-brained fool. When this is all over, I'm gonna hire me a secretary. Maybe I'm really gonna write... Nothing interesting. 121 days until retirement, then to infinity and beyond. 120... 
I think there's family stuff in there. What's left after my wife and daughter. What? Why are you staring at me? I don't know. I'm still not used to us working together again. Really? I didn't get used to it for ten years, if that helps. Only nine, Marty. Only nine. To be honest, I'm glad I don't have to do this alone. That's not something I often hear from you, boss. Look, uh, I'm sorry I dragged you into this, Marty. Ah, don't be. I would have been bored to death, still be on that shooting range. And Laura? What about her? She's used to it. Every New Year's the same. You know, since that special one. Don't say it. A bloody New Year's. Yeah. So Laura's probably at home, waiting for me on the couch, staring into a candle and killing a bottle of wine. Or two. You can get out of this any time. You know that, don't you? If you start something, finish it, right? Let's just make it through alive, okay? Or Laura will bite off my head. Literally. I'm on it, partner. What could this list mean? And what's the connection to Deborah? I have no idea, Marty, but we'll figure it out. What could this list mean? She was the one, right? Marty. Jeez. Oh, Hey, Lewis, uh, sorry to disturb you, again. Uh, could you come over to my place? I uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case? With the chicken police? Of course, Sonny. I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. One? <laughs> Just a little bit second. Yeah? What? Uh, nothing. Uh, forget it. What could this list mean? Good old rabbit. I can always rely on him. Sometimes I feel a little bad about using him so much, but he's so eager to help, I wouldn't want to break his enthusiasm. Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't m m mention it. Besides, it was my big dream dr 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 to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well, well, these names. I know ha half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But but I have no idea what kind of list this is. Here we go. But these are all members of the upper c c class. Politicians, business people, oh my. <clears throat> Even the commander of the r Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it m means. So, is it a dead end? I'm a afraid so. May I ask what you have gotten yourself into? This looks s s s serious. It's complicated, Lewis. But nothing good. I can tell you that much. Ah. Is there a a a anything else that I can help you with? Maybe there's something. Maybe I should ask something specific from him. Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes. She's a very lovely young lady. Where did you take her after you two left? Where she asked me to. To Flowerville. Flowerville? Rochester Street 37? Y y y yes, exactly. 
Why? Luck. <gasps> Did something happen? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. This? This? Oh, 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 my goodness. I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. You s s see, I also have one of these. A card? Like this? Really? Y yes. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does SN mean, Lewis? It's the s s sweltering Nile. But that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel. But it's not, not like that. It's something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> it is rather embarrassing. <clears throat> Listen, Lewis. How do we get in? Phew. Want to get in? Well, if you show them this card, they'll surely let you in. But it will be obvious you're not regulars there. We're used to that. So, are we going to a luxury brothel? Correct, Marty. Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one. For the third time today, I think. I don't know what you s s s said to him, but after you finished, he almost immediately van, van disappeared. Really? That's suspicious. Or he had business elsewhere. It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's going somewhere. I didn't see... I didn't see her after the show. If I'm not mistaken, she usually leaves when everyone else has already left. What else do you know about her, Lewis? Oh, not much. What everybody knows. She was a dancer, then a backing singer, then st st star, and then club owner. We found out as much already. Do you think she'd fled the Stavonian massacre? That's why the secrecy. Do you mean the massacre of the royal f family? I'd say her accent is a dead g giveaway, and her name too, though it's undoubtedly an alias. So it's possible that she is a part of the royal family? I don't think so. Nobody could have survived that hor hor awful night. Mm, you're probably right. What should we know about the place, Lewis? Besides what they're uh, dealing in there? No, oh, it's an elegant and exclusive place. Not everybody visits them for, for, for that, you know. Some animals just go for c c company. <clears throat> I see. I guess it's mostly visited by the upper class. M mostly, yes. The wealthy who have a taste. Yes, of course. Is it true what they say, that it's some kind of hidden stronghold of the royalists? The Nile is a proud herald of the coexistence of all the sp species, yes. But stronghold? I don't think so. But the place must be an eyesore for the separatists, right? Oh, don't, don't, don't worry for the girls, Sonny. They can defend themselves quite well. The separatists wouldn't dare to go near the place. Well, we'll see what they have to say about these two old cocks. Uh, that was a little bit, um, <clears throat> equivocal. Maybe I should ask... What could this list mean?
To Marty's delight, we were heading toward the most exclusive brothel in Clawville. The Separatists and those opposing the monarchy hated the place, just like they hated everything that supported interracial relations and peaceful coexistence of all species. So the place wasn't just a brothel, it was a symbol. But just like a brothel is not a worthy symbol, Clawville failed to turn out the way it was intended. Well, here we are. The kingdom of long legs, silky skin, and fluttering lashes. We've arrived. Calm down, Marty. Watch your blood pressure. I... I don't even know... Good gods! Hey, keep it down, Marty. I see it now. Of all that's furry. Yes, it's very furry. Or more like, uh, shaggy. This picture, uh, this one's really artistic for a change. Fur. You swallowed so hard, the whole place shook. Are you kidding me? I've never seen anything like this before. Is this even legal? Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Vice? You really must be joking. Vice? In Clawville? Uh, okay, okay, I was pulling your leg. But still, it's a little hot in here. Now well, cool down, Marty. Don't even look over there. Remember Laura, your wonderful girlfriend, whom you love more than anything. You don't need to tell me. All I'm thinking about is her. With a hatchet in her hand. More like my nuggets. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Laura, 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 Laura. That's it, Marty. Just slowly turn away from the pictures. Laura. 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 <laughs> that woman. She's familiar. Do you think it's her? The broad from the Bloody New Year's? God damn it, Marty. Do you have to say it out loud? It gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps more like. Anyway, I don't know if it's really her. I always get confused by the exotic ones, but... Yeah, maybe. Honestly? It gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too. Anyway, she's a very attractive gal, huh? And this photo is really something. Very, uh, artistic. You call that art? This is what real art is about, Sonny. It's beautiful and mysterious. Well, you should have seen the picture on Natasha's wall. Your heart would have skipped a beat for sure. Wait, what picture? Talk to me. Eh, nothing. It's... forget it. It's not important. Hey, you're not getting off that easily. I want to know. No, my friend, you have to earn that. <sighs> You're a real bastard, you know? I know, Marty. Maybe it is really her. <laughs> These brides are elegant. Just like Laszlo said. Lewis. What do you think could be the old rabbit's type? Fluffy tails, furry ears, a raspy tongue? Oh, for the love of all the gods, stop it. But just think about it. Please shut up, Marty. How young is this girl? Damn. This place is clucked up. Do you think they're forced to do this? Marty, we're not here for that. Just for the information we need. Yeah, but... You know what, Sonny? We're fortunate to be able to choose what we do with our lives, huh? You are, Marty. 
You have the chance to work with Santino Featherland. Me, on the other hand... Aha. Uh, a fine young gal, that's for sure. She's what I call an exotic beauty. Well, that's one way to put it. Hey, every animal's the most beautiful thing in the world to someone. Yeah, you're right. Oof, I don't know about you, but I go weak in the knees for stripes. Please, Marty, I don't want to know. And I don't care. Keep it to yourself. And let's get out of here quickly. <laughs> Can't I even talk to you anymore? You can. Ask about the weather, or how's my lower back. Those two are even connected, if you want to know. Yeah, old fart. Beauty is relative. Yeesh. That guy's stare gives me the creeps. Eh, uh, I can see why. I've always told myself that birds are weird. What did you just say? Huh? What? Me? Nothing. Is he a bouncer or a guest? Eh, I'd rather not ask. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you be so kind as to help me? With pleasure, ma'am. The zipper always comes down on my dress. Would you kindly zip it back up? Can I, Sonny? What am I, your mother? Do what you want, for God's sake. Happy to help, ma'am. Oh, what a gallant young man. Clucking lords. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Can I try again? If you'd really like to. Please, be more careful this time. I will be, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you'd read. Oh, I'm sorry. If you'd. Marty McChicken. Thank you, darling Marty. I'm much obliged. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime. I think she must be the receptionist. Bravo, Mr. Detective. Why'd you have to be like that all the time? Well, sometimes I seriously can't decide if you've become totally stupid over the years, or it just entertains you to act that way. Well, you know, that's a good question. That's exactly what I mean. Maybe she knows something about Deborah, or the card that brought us here. My name is Day-Night Diamond. 
Welcome to the sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Miss Diamond, I'm Sonny, and this is my partner, Marty. If I may, miss, you have a beautiful name and exceptionally wonderful stripes. Marty, not now. Oh, thank you very much. Please excuse him. He doesn't visit places like this very often. Uh, me neither, uh, to be honest. Oh, nothing to worry about, gentlemen. There's a first time for everyone. You're absolutely right. We're just interested in a certain lady called Deborah. Deborah? We don't have any employees by that name right now, but if you want, any of our girls would love to be Deborah for a night. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, you misunderstand. Uh, she doesn't work here. I'm afraid I don't follow. It's kind of confusing, but let me try to explain. Please, I'm at your service. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. You hear that, Sonny? Any questions? Shut up, Marty. May I invite you gentlemen for a drink, perhaps? No, thank you. We're in a hurry. Oh. If you have a specific question, please, go ahead, officers. Oh, you've noticed we're cops. <laughs> please don't take this the wrong way, but it was evident the moment you turned up. Should we take that as a compliment? If you'd like. I have something that'll interest her. I wouldn't want to offend you, far from it, but it's evident you're from the police, even without this. Is it that obvious? No, it isn't, but, you know, here in the Nile, we have a keen eye for this kind of thing. Right. I understand, ma'am. Do you know a gentleman named Louis C. Hayworth? Of course I do. Mr. Hayworth is a regular guest at our establishment. I see. Uh, how regular, if I may ask? I can't give you any information about that. House policy. We have that too. It's called the law, ma'am. Mm. If you have any questions of that nature, please come back with a warrant. Ah, touche. Does this list mean anything to you? This? I'm not sure. No, nothing. Don't you see some familiar names on there? I do, but everybody knows those animals. Personally, I have no contact with any of them. I see. Oh, thank you. Look, she gave this to us. The girl named Deborah, the one we uh, asked you about. I see. Do you know what this is? Of course. It's a membership card. Was this person a regular here? If this belonged to her, then yes. I can check for you. Please, the ladies will entertain you while you wait. I'll be right back. Uh, thank you. Uh, much obliged. Is he a bouncer or a guest? I apologize for the wait. Please, come with me, gentlemen. So you were successful? My mistress, Madame Zavas, would like to meet you. You mean that, Madame Zavas? As far as I know, there's only one of her, so 
Yes. Please, miss, take us to her. With pleasure. Madame Zavas was a legend in Clawville. Her name was known all over the wilderness. She's an avid royalist, former member of the Council of Twelve, spy master, assassin, businesswoman, and courtesan. To be honest, I didn't even know she was still alive. She's no spring chicken, that's for sure. She could also be my mother, or maybe my grandmother. First Ibn Wessler, now her. Honestly, tonight it wouldn't surprise me if His Majesty Hector III didn't grace me with his presence. What a painting! Congratulations, ma'am. Marty. Yes. It's beautiful indeed. <laughs> it's more than 40 years old. You know, I was considered pretty then. Oh, don't say that. You still look great, ma'am. Thank you. It feels good, but no. There's no need for lies. Those days are long gone. Every age has its truth and its beauty. For me, beauty is not in the looks anymore. I agree, ma'am. Yes, this is the Zevas from the legends. Beautiful and deadly. Interesting pieces. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. This is the art of the Nylonites. Ah, hence the name, the Sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. Ah, interesting. Thank you. Beautiful pieces for sure. They must be worth a fortune. There are books here on quite a variety of topics. There are books here. There are books. There are books. book there are book is that the time already have you noticed your clocks not working how observant you are that clock isn't meant to show the time it's a decoration a memento it's beautiful Indeed. There's something weird about that clock. So she is the legendary Madame Zavas. So she is the le Let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are. And I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. Uh, thank you. That's flattering. Hmm. May I ask what you are looking for exactly? Here, on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... Belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And... The name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work, the law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? 
I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything. But, as I said, discretion. Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless, but now it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. I swim well, too. So, gentlemen, what do you want to know? Let's see. As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees, too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Lewis Hayworth is a good friend of mine. It uh, surprises me that he's a regular here. You wouldn't believe our clientele. You would be shocked. No doubt. Lewis, uh, does he come here often? Mm, not so often. Thank you for the vague answer, ma'am. The mystery is thrilling. The thrill is life itself. That was beautiful, ma'am. Tell me, have you ever seen this list? I have. Am I right to assume it has something to do with the sweltering Nile? It does, yes. But I can't tell you more about it. No. Discretion is key. Absolutely. Do you know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted. Protective. Quick-tempered. Fierce. Yes. Fierce. Thank you. Very useful. This place isn't just our home with the girls. It's a sanctuary. Really? How? It symbolizes why the city was founded almost a thousand years ago. Unity. Love. Freedom. Interbreeding? That too, yes. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't. My girlfriend's a predator. Really? I'm glad to hear it. So, gentlemen. Deceit is everything to save us. She used to be a spy, so I'm gonna take her every word with a grain of salt. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavos? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> but you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. Tell me, were you really the king's spy? If that's such an open secret, then I haven't been doing my job very well, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, I was a spy. But that's such a blunt way of putting it. 
I always say I used to undertake confidential, generally political assignments of a delicate nature for the king that were in the interests of national security. Put that way, it sounds rather romantic. Don't believe the cheap fiction, Mr. Featherland. Espionage is anything but romantic. I believe you, madam. If you must know, I only did it because I believed I could protect those that I serve. Weapons have only one use in this world. To keep the peace. Yes. I always thought about myself and my craft that way. Thank you for your honesty, ma'am. Why did you decide to open a brothel? You know, this place used to be an orphanage. Then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then, young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. To help them. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yes, survive, no matter the cost. And it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Or the opposite. <laughs> that could avert a war. If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but... If you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then, I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question. Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret, while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant, so she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Save us as a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Why did you take her in? Maybe you saw yourself in Natasha. She was only 17 when she knocked on the rear entrance of the brothel on an unusually cold, rainy night. I opened the door myself. Was Natasha alone? Yes, completely alone. 
Her left arm was slashed with an ugly wound, and she was frozen to the bone, barefoot, only a thin nightgown on her. Did she tell you what happened to her? After I brought her into the house, warmed her up, and changed her into new clothes, that was the first thing I asked. But no, she didn't tell me. We became very good friends. But I still don't know what happened to her and where she came from. Or how she knew about this place and the rear entrance. And you weren't bothered by all those secrets? That would have been very hypocritical of me, don't you think? No, it didn't bother me. I make a living out of secrets, Mr. Featherland. I see. Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos, and she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her? An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to the Stavonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. It's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland, yes. Curious. That's why I've always been rather fond of Natasha. Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed, it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Have you kept in touch? Only occasionally, Mr. Featherland. She writes to me every few weeks, and very rarely we talk on the phone. But I haven't heard from her in weeks. The truth is I've started to worry about her. Did she give no sign of being in trouble? Never. No. Natasha's not the kind to talk about her feelings. Yeah, I've noticed that myself. When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavas? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball, attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant, she was in love. Yes, in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly, I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do, because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have... I felt betrayed on a certain level, yes, 
and offended and alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Any time, detective. Yes, any time. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. These books are here for a reason. They mean something. Yes, this is the Zevas from the legends. Yeah. Hidden door. Who'd have thought? She is a legendary ex-spy. Well, this is something I've never understood. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you, but riddles can be solved by anyone. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is, maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask her real face, it's her. Well, you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets. So the rumors are true. Military intelligence. This dame's really something. I'm starting to think the whole brothel is just a cover. Ah, uh, makes sense. You think she's still working for royal intelligence? Well, based on what she told us, she's a committed royalist. So I imagine she does. If we fly too close to the sun, we burn our wings. Hector III, our great and fair king. I feel sorry for the poor fox, to be honest. I don't. He has it pretty good. Would you like to live your life as a puppet? Everything you do, carefully planned. Your rule and authority, the whole thing, just for show. Even if he is just a puppet, Clawville needs a king. He gives strength and hope to many animals. <laughs> I guess. We shouldn't cross the king. That would be beyond our pay grade. Uh, 
Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. Me too. We better get out of here before she comes back. Ugh, this place... Me too. Ah, names, numbers, dates. Oh, furry gods. Do you think they all belong to the brothel? Hell no. Half of it is a matter of national security. What did we step into? You know what? I don't care, Marty. I'm too old for conspiracies. The only thing that matters to me is to find out what the furry hell we're doing here. And what it has to do with Natasha. Sure. I don't want to know what's in them. And there's no time to search the place either. Somebody started typing a letter, but left it unfinished. What does it say? Number 2947222. Report about separatist group movements. Damn it. Don't even read that. What? Why not? I don't know about you, but I don't want to get caught up in the royalist separatist conflict. What you don't know can't hurt you, right? Uh, I can't even recognize you, boss. Where did you put your sense of adventure? My sense of adventure has retired. Leave it alone. Just forget it's here, Sonny. That's not what you're looking for. This has got to be it, Marty. Look at the missing page. Oh, gods. And look at the names. Yeah, the ladies and their guests. Damn. What this means, Marty, is that the most influential people in the city had been Natasha's patrons. Some even from the royal family. This book could destabilize Clawville. At least the Clawville we currently know. You think this is behind everything? Somebody's blackmailing Natasha because of this? That could easily be the case. But something still doesn't fit. That piece of a painting. Sonny? If there's even a small chance of... Sonny. What? There's another familiar name here. What are you talking about? Fucking hell, Sonny. Molly? She was working here too. Uh, it's probably someone else with the same name. So that's why Natasha told me they'd known each other for a long time. Look, boss. I can't believe it. All those stories about her past. Listen, boss bird. Molly loved you, right? Isn't that what matters? Marty, please shut your fucking beak right now, or I'll shut it for you. Okay, boss. I'm sorry, but... Just shut the cluck up. We've caught them sneaking around, Miss Diamond, you see? I see, madam. No, oh, back off, ladies. There's no need for this. We don't want trouble. No, maybe you don't. Unfortunately, trouble has found you, gentlemen. Madam Zabos, we needed to know the connection. What this place has to do with Natasha. And... And? And my wife. Filthy cops? He's talking gibberish. May I shoot him? No, not yet, Miss Diamond. I'd be very sorry to put holes in your lovely striped skin, but believe me, baby, I will. I've always wanted to know if diamonds are bulletproof. Please, madam? It'll all be over in a second. No. We have received different orders, Miss Diamond. Stand down. Oh, I see. The pony does tricks on command. Well, I'm not surprised. That's enough, Marty. You knew who she was, didn't you? What she meant to me. Well, well, Mr. Featherland. Aren't you interested in your case anymore? No? 
All it took was a name from your past, and your professionalism drowned in the mud. Stop playing games with me, Zavos. What does all this have to do with Molly? Nothing at all. No, she was just a little bird among the many who sought refuge here. You forced her into this. You'd love to hear that, but until she met you, she was one of us. Just another... You clucking... Sonny, no! I think I was dreaming. But it wasn't the kind of dream you'd want to remember. Dark and painful. Then the suffocating smoke woke me. It wasn't fried eggs, that's for sure. Where was I? What happened? That treacherous crocodile. Then I saw Marty, who looked as horrible as I felt. Well, I've always wanted a romantic sea voyage. God damn it, I knew I shouldn't have gone along with this. Marty, I told you you could get out any time. Yeah, and you knew damn well that I wouldn't. That I would never leave you in deep shit once I've joined you. You knew it, and you still asked me to do it. Marty, listen. You're a selfish bastard, Sonny. And you drag everyone around you down with you. How long was it till retirement? 120 days? 121. But you just couldn't sit still on your ass, could you? Well, take a good look around, boss bird. This is you. And this is what follows you. Just this clucking misery and dead bodies. Do you understand? You have nothing else to offer but suffering. Marty. And feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, you're great at that. I can't believe this shit. We're gonna die here on a god's damn blazing ship like roast chicken. Well, it's dramatic at least, just like you like it. Marty. What? I've almost managed to untie the knot. But if you keep thrashing around like that, we're really gonna die here. Ah, oh, for cluck's sake. Fine, work your magic. Until then, I'm gonna say all the prayers I know. You better. We'll be fried chicken. I hope there are spices in those barrels, at least. At least we'll go out with a bang. Goodbye, partner. It's been a swell ride. If we kick the bucket, I'm glad you're here, pal. Well... Let me concentrate on the rope. Oh, really? What a sharp observation. Shut up. You know, this reminds me of the time when... Are you fucking with me? We're about to be burnt to a crisp, Sonny. Calm down, I know what I'm doing. Oh, great furry heavens, we're doomed! I just have to say, I love you, boss. Hey, hey, don't overdo it. I just have... So close, yet so far. We might not survive even if we reach it, but we've got no choice.
What now? Now we run and swim. I can't swim. Well, you better learn fast or you'll die. I'm not gonna drag your fat ass to the shore if that's what you're hoping. Well, I shouldn't have brought this many guns with me. Throw them away then. Never! Then they'll drag you down into the deep. Ah, I don't care. I always thought your gun mania would be your undoing. Cluck you, Sonny. We have to survive this first. Well, after you, boss bird. <laughs> that furry fucking clucking god. Damn. Yeah. Listen, Marty. What? What you said on the ship. What? What about it? You were right. I knew this would happen. Or something like it. I dragged you into this deliberately. Because I'm not enough on my own. Sonny, cut the crap. No, I'm serious. I knew I couldn't do this alone. I needed you to... Well, to look out for me. I don't need this, all right? Stop playing the wounded soul. I don't fucking care. Fair enough. <laughs> You're right. Hell yeah, I'm fucking right. I'll, uh, shut up now. Good. You know, I have a feeling this night's just getting started. We were almost finished. Yeah. You don't want to quit, do you? No, Sonny, I don't. Thanks, partner. Yeah. That was a close call. Too close. I'm glad you made it, partner. I swear, the pigeon's immortal. You can swim after all. Yeah, or the river spat me out. Well, what about your guns? Did you throw them away? Hell no. Where they go, I go. And where I go, they're coming with me no matter what. I'm seriously amazed you're still alive. Yeah, sure. Well, anyway, I'm glad we both made it. Yeah, thanks. I must admit you were pretty dope with that rope. But... But still, cluck me. Am I right? Without you, we wouldn't even be in this mess, so if you weren't successful with the rope, I would have strangled you before we both burnt to death. Nice thought. But your hands were tied, so... Sonny... Okay, okay, you're right. And now we'll have to see where this shitstorm ends. Yeah, I know. Burning us, along with a ship, that's pretty dramatic. We stepped in big dung, that's for sure. Do you think Wessler and the Crocodile are in it together? I get the feeling that whoever hit us wasn't a pretty gal. Yeah, figures. What now? Well, we'll get ourselves together, then we'll figure out where to go next. Uh, sure. Where are we, anyway? Well, we couldn't have drifted too far. Well, let's find out, and get the cluck out of here. Good idea. I don't want to make him more angry. You've seen better days, too, haven't you? You've seen but Clawville. You tried it again, but I'm still alive. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Cluck 
me. That's old Captain Marsh. I thought he died 50 years ago. He was a local legend back when I was a kid. I think I must have hit my head pretty badly. Say, isn't that Captain Marsh? You see him too? Oh, thank the gods. Ho, 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 lads. What the hairy devil are you doing out here? Isn't it a bit cold for a swim? It was warm on the ship, at least while it was burning. I bet it was. Arr. Hey, Captain, how's it hanging? It's hanging all right. Arr. What about you, lovers? What was all that ruckus, eh? Oh, I think someone tried to kill us, Captain. Again. Come on, Boise. There's nothing new there. Yeah, old rust can't be scraped away. Did you see anything, Captain? Arr, of course I have. A burning ship. Then two cocks suddenly learn to fly. And even swim, by God. Oh, what a time to be alive, eh? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, old man. Sure I haven't. I'm steady. Like the Sea of Clawville. Yeah, except that Clawville doesn't have a sea. Of course it does, laddie. Just not here in Clawville. Okay, okay. That's too much for me. But seriously, have you seen anything? Arr, of course I have. I'm always watching, my lad. Just ask me, what do you want to know? Tell me, Captain, do you hang out here all the time? This behind me is me ship, lads. Or at least, it's a ship I'm living in at the moment. It's not mine, you know. And what do you do? Hmm. I stand here and watch the sea. The sea? You mean the River Times? River? <laughs> Arr, that was a good one, boy. Okay. Tell me, Cap... A black car stopped not far from here. A rich-looking car. Shiny and all. Yeah? What else? Two big lads stepped out of it. One of them was looking like some kind of... cow? The other was a cat. A big cat. They were fancy looking at the ship. I don't blame them. It's not something you see every day. I swear on all the saints of the sea. Arr. Just a wild guess. Was it a ram and a bobcat? Arr, exactly. Are you friends of theirs? Well, an acquaintance. It's the bouncer of the Tsar Club and the goon that was hanging around Ibn. Plumy gods. Zavas answers to Ibn too. Or at least they're connected. Yeah. Oh, arr. That sounds exciting. He's the old timer. This uh, Ram fella, what did he do after watching us? Arr. Nothing at all, Eddie. When that lovely ship started to sink, they got into their pretty car and got away like bats out of hell. So they didn't see us swimming to shore. Uh, I wouldn't know that. Uh, what now? I don't know. We can't go to the station, that's for sure. We agree on that. I think I broke a rib or two. My sight's getting blurry. Pluck me. You know what this means? Oh, no, no. I'd rather go blind than go to Bubo's. We have to, pal. I'm not your pal, especially after tonight. Come on, we've got no choice. <sighs> well, we survived the burning ship. I guess we'll survive the madman, too. Don't be so optimistic. Do you know anything about the place called the Sweltering Nile? Of course I do, me boys. But they don't really tolerate folks like me there. Not surprised. Hmm. Have you heard anything unusual about it? Arr, sure I have. They have the most beautiful wenches there, laddie. Like sirens of the sea. 
and they're willing to do anything for you. If only I were a spring chicken like ye are, I'd be already running over there. <laughs> well, actually, Captain, that's where we came from. On a burning ship? Bloody hell! You know how to live, lads. Ah, uh, we're doing our best, Captain. Hey, give me! Arr! Have you heard the name Madame Zavas? Arr! When I was young like ye, they were talking about a gorgeous crocodile with that name. Aye, beautiful and deadly. Just how I like my women. Arr! Ah, me too. It's her, yeah. Less beautiful now, but just as deadly. Her, she has something to do with a burning ship, eh? You're uh, quite the detective. Her, so I've been told. <laughs> <laughs>